every time you get a chance to witness this scene, you feel lucky. Nothing like it. Man, this is what it's all about. This is what college football is all about. I've, I've said this is the best scene in the country. I love and appreciate you guys. Understand this. We didn't get here without every single person in this room. We got here together. Let's finish this thing together. Everybody got me? Let's go do this thing. Welcome to Whiteout Weekly on our third straight glorious Penn State Victory Week, which now ranks us sixth in the AP poll. And of course, that awesome nationally televised Whiteout win over Auburn that looked absolutely electric. I was fortunate enough at the wedding to be able to watch it in the backyard on TV. But Dave, give me the full rundown from pregame, from waking up, pregame, game, postgame. Oh, dude. Oh, uh, it was great to be back at State College. No, shit ton has changed, dude, from when we were there. Oh, we have yeah, sky sure. rise, apartment buildings, you know, on Beaver. Kids are living the life down there. But uh, rolled in Friday morning, headed right for Primanti Bros. Uh, lines were out the ass. I mean, you know, as well as I know, you know, game weekends, they, they blew. <laughs> you know, good luck trying to get into a bar. Uh, yeah. But Waited a good hour in Permanis, you know, at noon on a fucking Friday. Uh, got in there, got a little tuned up uh, with, the, with the fam. So that was good. But woke up Saturday morning feeling great. Uh, went out the, the main night to the new killed it or Rascaler, rather. It's called Doggies now. Wait, um, we got a nice called, setup. What's the Skeller called now? It's called Doggies Pub. Doggies Pub. They have like this open courtyard scene now. Okay. Um, so it's it's pretty sweet. I was a big fan of the Skeller. But I uh, woke up Saturday hurting a little bit, but, you know, it's, it's game day, baby, so you got to get revved up. Yeah. So I headed downtown, checked out game day a little bit. You know, Saquon's guest picker called that shit. Yeah, uh, that was so awesome. Did probably Great a lot club. of other people. Uh, checked out game day, uh, then headed right for the tailgates, man. Was in the RV lot uh, with the fam. Uh, nice. Pretty, pretty much that the whole day. That lot was insane like when you walk yeah. over the hill and you just see like just a massive rvs it's just like oh well, dude fuck. the night prior there lot. was a risk of them not having that lot ready to go there was some storm that came through that okay. knocked down all the fucking power lines oh shit so obviously penn state is not gonna not get the revenue from that lot so they had oh, almost shit. every power company in the state <laughs> over there putting up all new power lines but they were ready to go by noon on friday so yeah, we're working all night. They did everything in their power to get the those <laughs> make sure that those RVs were in there. But you know, made the trek over the stadium at six. Pre-game was awesome. Uh, the uh the team did a great job with all former players down on the sideline. Obviously, there was a shit ton of recruits there, but you had Barkley there, you had Grant Haley, you know, they were reliving on the scoreboard his uh block kick, uh block field goal return for a touchdown. Yep. They had some clips up on the scoreboard of Michael Parsons. It nice. The whole presentation was great. And, dude, when they announced that attendance was – I think it was 25 people shy of 110,000. Yeah. It, it was great. <laughs> it, it looked fucking, like, absolutely It was bad. insane. It, 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 it felt so good. And everything I've seen on Twitter from every recruit that's been at that game has been nothing but, like, holy shit. Penn State is absolutely electric. That was one of the best visits that I've had. Yeah. So, yeah. Got, I think they got a four star four star corner to commit right after the game, Lamont Payne from uh, class of 2023. I don't I don't know how you don't commit after being in that environment. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play here. After that but, win two over SEC team. Yeah. Uh Auburn fans traveled well too. There was a good bit of orange and you could probably you could see it from TV, but yeah, uh, even sure. around the, the tailgate lots downtown. There was Auburn fans, they they showed up and oh, yeah. it, it was it was cool to see. Was it a pre um that's where I'm looking for benign situation in the tailgate. Like, what there wasn't any like Auburn PSU Pickering or anything like that. Not really, not really. From what I saw, you know, it was it was you know just exchanging you know some words. You know, obviously, you know each team wanted to win, um, but they were really impressed with that atmosphere. Yeah. Um, obviously, SEC has some tough environments, but there's there's nothing like that. You know, that whiteout and coming back and watching it live on TV, they were. 
they were loving the aerial shots with the Goodyear blimp. They showed oh, it every yeah. chance they could get, but any chance. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. So let's get into the actual game. Um, I think the thing that stood out for both of us watching this game was Sean Clifford and his poise. Um, I think I counted since I had to rewatch it on Monday, obviously. I counted he went 20 for 32 mm -hmm. uh, for 280 yards. Um, but all four of those incompletions came in the first half. So he had the one that was the miscommunication with uh, Parker Washington. Which, which they call grounding on, dude. Yeah, which, I mean, who knows whose fault that is. So that's a that's a wash. He did have the bad missed throw, easy out to Lambert, which he's good for once a game. Uh, missed one screen and then had that just terrible uh, deep throw interception, which is almost like a pun. It's at yeah. the end of the second half, so. But then in the second half, he goes 13 for 13 for 114 yards. No turnovers. He didn't carry the ball making easy throws, easy reads. He was just locked in. Yeah, played played the game of his life. <laughs> you know, really accompanying, doing a lot of different things. They didn't they didn't run him a lot. He had a couple where he, you know, tucked it and ran. He had one big one in the fourth quarter. We had about, I think it was a 15, 20-yard scramble. But Yurchich really was getting him in a groove with, with his throws. And, and Clifford was just making a lot happen out there. Yeah, he, he had really a lot was. of time. The offensive line stepped up big i know i'm sure yeah. you got some stats on you know on scruggs and those guys but they they gave him a lot of time uh despite not having the running game quite getting going yet still in, in the past game they, they were giving him all the time that he needed and so he was either able to hang in there and make the throw or if it started to collapse a little bit he was he was making throws on the run he he was damn near perfect in that game and we were saying that last week he kind of he needed to be able to he needed to read those blitzes be able to pick yeah. those up and deliver the easy throws. But the thing that struck out with me the most was his poise. Um, I think he injured his elbow at some point during the game. He was yeah, he looked like he got banged up on a couple plays. But the third drive of the game was an awful three and out, and that was the intentional grounding throw to Washington with the miscue. Um, the next drive, he bounces back, goes four for four with two big plays to the tight end, Strange and mm -hmm. Johnson. Um, so four for four, 73 yards, and then hit Scottson for that touchdown. Yeah. So that's like the short memory that I need my quarterbacks to have. Mm -hmm. He had a terrible drive. Comes back, four for four, 73 yards, touchdown. Boom. Yeah, the and tight end showed up big time. So yeah, tight end's first game mm -hmm. that they uh, that they appear. But um, yeah. one thing I was going to say was Reese Davis said, I think it was like right at the beginning of the game, <clears throat> when he talked to Sean Clifford, Clifford said that he felt like the most confident quarterback in America, which goes back to his that short memory mm -hmm. that you need as a quarterback, where it's just like, all right, I suck that drive. I'm so confident in my game. I'm gonna run what works for me. Yeah. And I, I think really what a game like that shows, obviously, you know, Clifford balled out. I mean, he did everything that, you know, was asked of him. Obviously, you give it a lot of credit to your your chitch, you know, for dialing up the plays. I think you give a lot of credit to Franklin too uh, for canning Kirk Shiraka after one year last year and knowing that your chish was his guy mm -hmm. and, you know, get it with the AD saying, Hey, this is my guy. We got to get him in here. You know, cause got everyone knows if we lost that game, you know, Franklin's getting all the blame for that. So I think oh, sure. getting his guy in house and also what it shows is the knock on PSU has been what really what's been keeping us behind from get, getting a chance at the playoff, keeping us behind Ohio State, is we can't get that big-time QB recruit. And I think what you're going to see, obviously we got a couple big guys coming in next year's recruiting class, got Drew, mm -hmm. Drew Aller, or Bo Prabula. But seeing that, you know, the kind of development that Clifford's had in yeah. a short amount of time under Yurchich and be able to play a game like that in a primetime mm -hmm. setting is going to make a lot of four or five star guys saying, Hey, in that offense, I want to play there, which has not been the rap on Penn state over the last yeah. number of years. I can't, and, you know, Hackenberg was the last big time recruit that we got in here. And, you know, we know how that panned out. Dude, I still scars of Robert Bolt. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. you kidding me? Like he, first true freshman to start for Penn state. Just <laughs> garbage. I think he's, I think he's selling insurance now. <laughs> <laughs> that good. Um, but yeah, I think the relationship between Yurchich, I can never say that name right, and uh, Clifford 
you can see it game by game. You're just kind of yeah. picking up on his strengths, his weaknesses. He's giving mm-hmm. easy throws, easy reads. The mm-hmm. two throws to the tight ends that were wide fucking open. Yeah, yeah. But he's giving them easier reads and where he doesn't mm-hmm. have to throw people open, where he doesn't have to fit in the tight corners. He's kind of adhering to his strengths and weaknesses, which is what a coach has to do. Absolutely. So on the other side of the ball, we said we have to stop Hank and make Bo Nix put the ball in Bo Nix's hands and make him win the game. And that's essentially what we did. He did get us get them close. Uh, yeah. Got them downfield, down 28-20, but uh, ended up not coming out on top, obviously. Um, he was one for 10 on throws over 20 yards. Yeah. So that really puts the game in perspective that, like, once you stop the running game, which we eventually did, I put the ball in Bonex's hands, he just wasn't able to capitalize on any, anything. Yeah, we knew he going in the game. Too. Yeah, we knew going in they had, they had a, some inexperienced receivers, but from, you know, watching it even the sec, for the second time, you know, watching the broadcast, he didn't really give his guys a chance to make a play. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of time. Yeah, and, you know, some questionable play calls in there, too. They had that fourth and goal, you know, where they're going with the fade route. Um, yeah. Could have been an offensive PI, but, you know, neither here nor there. But, you know, I think they, they stopped Bigsby as best they could, uh, but that guy's a, a beast. Yeah. Um, so a couple of stats on Bigsby. Um, so they had, a, towards the end of the third quarter, uh, they had the 15th place, 75-yard drive that ended in the tank touchdown. Mm-hmm. Made game 21 17 Penn State. Uh, so, up until that point, he had 16 rushes for 79 yards. So, he's averaging almost five yards per carry and had those two touchdowns heading into the late third and in the, in, into the entire fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So, during that span, late third into the entire fourth quarter, he had seven carries, 23 yards, 3.3 yards per carry, and as long was eight yards. He did that twice. Mm-hmm. So when we needed to shut him down, we shut him down. Yeah. And put the ball in Bonex's hands, made him win the game instead of tank big, they just bleed the clock, bleed the clock, set up a game winning like field goal or something like that. Right. And I think going back to, you know, with us on offense, that Auburn defense, I think I saw a stat they had something like 11 tackles for loss. So they, they showed up big time too. But the, the running game got going in some key spots. We saw, saw a little bit of John Lovett, which was nice to see. Love to see that. Uh, I think they announced. Yeah, I think it was Kirk Herbstreit or Fowler. They said he had been out due to a disciplinary action. So Mm -hmm. I don't know how truthful that was. They might have just making an assumption, but did see him out there. Keaton Ellis was out there on special teams, but Love it looks good, man. He, you know, and they put him in in some key spots in that fourth quarter. He had that big 20, 23 yard reception uh, for that first down. So I would love to see him get a little bit more time this week coming up against FC an FCS opponent, uh, yeah. like Nova. Mm-hmm. So, but good to see him back in there. Um, but you know, although Auburn's defense, what was nasty, you know, the, we were up for the test, which was good to see. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so I want to get into our all name or one name, excuse me, one name, all game picks. I'm going to allow you to go first on this one. Who's your guy? Yeah, I'm going to go with my guy, Brandon Smith. He, yeah. he showed up big time. Uh, I think he registered 10 tackles. He had that almost pick six where yeah. I think he was like, the ball. <laughs> but oh when I was in the stands, God. it felt like it was a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took me back to that whiteout against Michigan when Saquon had that reception that he was bobbing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Chuck, yeah. But, yeah, Smith showed up big time. The whole linebacking core did. But, uh, you know, Smith was was a beast out there. He was plugging the gaps. Uh making plays and coverage, but he, he really showed up big time. I was going to say, if it wasn't uh, Brooks Ellis or Brandon Smith flying to the ball first, it was either uh, PJ Mustafer or Jesse Lucetta. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give them my honorable mention uh, one name all game. They combined. Maybe an honor- honorable mention Derek Tangelo too. He- yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the fumble recovery, and then I think he had another play where he chased – I don't know if it was Bigsby or Hunter, but he chased them down about 30 yards down the sideline. But yeah. that dude showed up. Stick them in there. So as much as Tang had – he did rush it for over 100 yards, but we made the stops when we needed to. 
especially in the fourth quarter, Mustafer was just clogging up holes and just, just crushing things yeah. in the lane. Um, but for my primary one name all game, I'm going to go Jahan Datsun, who finished with 10 catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. He also threw uh, a pass for 22 yards to Tyler Warren, which was <laughs> awesome. Um, he had that one handed catch that was just unbelievable. I don't, I don't think that got replayed enough. That was just an out of control yeah, catch. Big time. And then any uh, D back or linebacker they put on him, he just completely burned. Number one cornerback, McCreary, he uh, caught two or four passes for 22 yards and the first down on him. Uh, our boy Smoke Monday, he caught, <laughs> he caught his touchdown pass against him. Um, he abused the linebacker, uh, Popo. Mm-hmm. Caught three passes on him for 22 yards on first down. And then caught two passes on Kobe McLean, 29 yards for first down, zero drops, zero pass breakups on him, and in total, five first downs game. Yeah, so he showed up big time. Uh, I honestly think he could be up for the Fred, the Fred Blintikoff. Or mm-hmm. his best wide receiver. Yeah. I, think he, I think he could potentially be a finals for that for sure. Yeah, I think he showed going into that game with a with a defense like Auburn, obviously knowing that he's the focal point of the offense, and he yeah. still made it look like he could glide and get open anytime that he wanted. So that's that's the type of route running, that's the type of player that comes from a big time player like that. So he showed that on the national stage. That was big. Yeah. How did you feel about was it Zakobi that got uh, the targeting call? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're in the stands. It's boo, get this guy the fuck out of here. Uh, yeah, the yeah. show on the scoreboard, everyone's looking at that. But going back and rewatching it, uh, it's a tough football play. It's you know, tough. looking looking to keep a guy out of the end zone. Exactly. And I know. He, I know Herb he, Street, he, you know, he, with Fowler Harper on it. It's that's a tough call. And yeah. He, he's like, what do you want me to do? Like, just let him into the end zone? Like, I have to do something to stop him. Like, yeah, and you could see him on the sideline, you know, just sprawled on the ground, devastated. But yeah, tough play. Tough you'll take that, up. you know, anytime you can get a player of that caliber off the field, especially in crunch time. But you know, you hate to see a, a guy go through that because yeah, a, a, it was a good football play. But the targeting rule is just is just so brutal too. It's like the seniors and stuff, like late in the game too, and they it's just like they're eject. I feel like yeah. the ejection is just is just too harsh of a penalty. I think it needs yeah. to be like one targeting warning and then if you get two boom then you're out i don't think especially you can... with how late that came he's he's gonna be out first first half and next game too they got a big game coming up yeah exactly too. I think it's just too harsh of a punishment i know they're trying to they're they're trying to keep the player safe without head-to-head contact but in cases like that it's just like what do you do yeah it's i just think the, the penalty is too harsh for some of the crimes that are being committed yeah um so do you have i personally have no needs to be improved after this week i was happy with basically everything that went on um do you have anybody for that yeah i mean it was good to see you know all all three groups offense defense special teams play it play a solid game you know franklin calls it complimentary football uh you know so whatever you want to call it but I think if you look anywhere, maybe the D line, you know, for how active Luketa and Mustafa were, they didn't register a sack on the game. True. So you, you could point the finger there, but, you know, as a d- defense as a whole, secondary linebacking group, they played solid. So maybe, maybe the D line, but again, it's just continued improvement. And again, coming up in a big spot in prime time against an SEC D team like that, get the win, um, you know, just so- solid play across the board. No, I'll give you that one. Um, just going over the pressures, we had 10 hurries and four QB hits, and Auburn had eight hurries and three QB hits. No sacks on either team. So it's kind of stalemate on both sides of the trenches there. Yeah. Um, so moving on to kind of a cupcake component here. Um, don't, don't want to call anybody a cupcake, but mm-hmm. Bill knows cupcake. They have a senior quarterback, Daniel Smith, who's thrown for almost 600 yards this season, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. And they also have just a the definition of a bowling ball running back. 5'11", 225 senior, Justin Covington. 
who most recently rushed for 18, 18 carries for 156 yards and two touchdowns. But that was against, <laughs> that was against, I'm going to guess, Bucknell. Yeah, take your pick. Fuck now, Lehigh. Okay. No, no, no. Lehigh. First mm-hmm. game against Lehigh. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a truck. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to watch out for him. But what I'm more interested in is because we, we pretty much know this will be a, uh, a blowout. But mm-hmm. I'm more interested to see what young talent come in possibly in the second half hopefully we're up enough that they can come in the second half so i want to hear some names that you have circled maybe to watch in the second half of this blowout yeah i think if you're looking at the offensive side of the ball i you know i mentioned before i think john lovett you want to see him get a little bit more run uh maybe a devin ford just maybe or you know you could keep Kevon Lee, after he fumbled that ball, he was out the rest of the game. So you can take your pick across that group just to I, see yeah. some consistency with the run game. Mm. Wide receiver group, you'd like to see him get a little bit, uh, add some more depth. They, You've only really seen Washington, Dotson, obviously, and Lambert Smith. So would like to see maybe some of the young guys get in. Yeah. You got Liam, you got Liam Clifford, Sean's brother, true freshman. Oh, okay. Heck, heck of an athlete. You got uh, Malik Mega from last year's class. Harrison Wallace, also a freshman. Cam Sullivan Brown, veteran guy. He had a catch. Uh, he might be a senior. Right? Yeah. yeah. So maybe to see him get a little bit more time. You got Daniel George there. So just just some added depth. You know, God forbid something happens to to one of those three guys that you got who have yeah. gotten the majority of the snaps. Tight end group, you'd like to see just some continued consistency. I would love to see Taquan Roberson get in this game in the third quarter. Obviously, yeah. if that's yeah. happening, you know, you know the yeah. game's in hand. It should be in hand. So just to get in some some added game action because he he's still your number two, despite mm-hmm. how great Clifford's look. If he goes down, God forbid, some injury comes in. Roberson's the guy. Yeah, be ready. So just to get him some game action, and then I think if you look at the dif- defensive side of the ball, linebacker depth, you know, is somewhat of a concern. So maybe gets true freshman Kobe King, Kalen King's brother, in there. We yeah. love to see Kalen a little bit more on the outside. Keaton Ellis, maybe a little bit more at safety. And then on the D-line, maybe looking at a Hakeem Beeman, get some action, you know, whether it's on the edge or D-tackle. But I think it's a good opportunity to get young guys some much-needed game reps as as you're entering the brunt uh, Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think I've said this all season, but this is – this might be – I mean, it's, it's a Wisconsin offense and an Auburn offense, so – Mm-hmm. take with a grain of salt but this is one of the most talented defenses that i've seen since like the puzzle was any tambali days yeah like this is a, such a talented defense and i'm excited to see the depth at corner especially because mm-hmm. we we've had great defenses but we've never had an elite secondary we finally had that elite secondary so i'm pumped to see yeah. King. i hope he gets a lot of snaps um and his 38 snaps against ball state he allowed three catches for only 14 yards, which is 4.7 yards a catch, no penalties, mm-hmm. and an 83.3 pro football focus coverage period, which was second on the team. And he also yeah. forced fumble. Yeah, he's a big time talent. So super pumped for him. The line for this game is Penn State. Have you looked at it? I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I have it. Um, okay. what's, your, what's your guess? Let me go with – give me Nits 35 and a half. Minus 29. Oh. So I'm taking that. Okay. I don't think Vondo is going to score on us. Mm-mm. Minus 30. Yeah, I think we're going to – Yeah, I, I like that. Hang like a, yeah, like a 42 nothing on them or something like that. 42 mm-hmm. 30. Yeah. It should be a good tune-up for a nice revenge game against Indiana. Yeah, that's going to be a huge one. And that's the one thing I'm hoping doesn't happen is the look ahead factor where we're kind of, you know, stagnant and not put up as many points. I hope we just throw them. I think they all have enough for, a, you know, you see Franklin tweet every week, one and oh, one and oh, one and oh, one and But I think the team yeah. truly lives by that mentality where they focus on going one and oh every week. So I don't think you'll find this group looking ahead at too many opponents or any opponents for that matter. Very true. And it starts from the top. Yeah. Franklin.
Um, before we head into the Big Ten betting bonanza, it's time for some trivia. And I'm currently on the clock. So, Dave, what you got for me? So, I got for you this Penn State running back. Okay. Holds the top four spots in regards to games with most rushing yards in a single game. He owns the top four records for most rushing yards in a single game. Okay. And so I'll my, give you top spot is 327 rushing yards in a game. He so rushed for 279 so, twice and then one game with 257. This is in one season. He is the, he's the top four single it's game. Penn State all time. Single game rushing yards. Single game rushing yards. Four. So someone who wants. My immediate thought was Larry Johnson. Oh! But then – Okay, Larry no, Johnson. I gave, I gave it to you too early. I was also going to think. I was thinking Tony Hunt because he had he was there for like guess. four years, and he could have gone off. I don't know for like a couple games, but yeah, LJ I cracked, baby. I cracked too early. Shit. <laughs> Love LJ. Uh, I wish he was a better pro. Yeah. Well, he had he had a decent season. He I had remember. that good half season when Priest yeah, maybe the half season on the Chiefs. Can't believe I got that. I know, dude. I was yeah. Because I was like, if I let you go, would you have still gone LJ? I, I, I don't know. I think I still would have because I, I really, I do remember that season of uh, yeah. him killing it. Because I was waiting for him. He was like second in line to, to somebody. And then he finally got that. He rushed for like 2,000 yards that year, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And I remember I was hiding the birds got him. And then he just didn't really pan out. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was behind Priest Holmes. Yeah. and we are here at week four of the big 10 betting bonanza and i should have a huge clown on my face <laughs> i went own three with my picks uh on saturday i also went i think one in five in nfl betting so i just had an off <laughs> i blame it on the weather i'm not an excuse guy but i blame it good thing is it's a new week clean slate exactly Looking on to week four. So, uh, hey, yeah, I did my classic uh, Miami switch. I had, yeah, that was just another just dumb fucking play. We both were on Maryland, and they they should have covered that game nine times out of ten. That mm-hmm. was on. So, yeah, negative three points for me brings me down to minus one on the season. Davey, you went two and or no one and two. You lost the Maryland game, the Ohio State first half. How did that not hit? I had that too. That game was just a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, very sloppy too. Um, and then obviously the Penn State minus six, big victory. I'm, I'm going to take that as a personal victory for me mm-hmm. for such a terrible week. So you are currently at plus one. I'm currently at minus one. Riveting, riveting stuff here from the Big Ten betting bonanza. <laughs> Um, so I'll do the pity honors of going first since I'm sucking and I'm going to take my favorite team. Hold on. Let me bring up the big 10 schedule. Don't get this wrong. My favorite team other than Penn state to, mm-hmm. to bet on Rutgers plus 20 at the big house. I think. I was going to take the first half, but I think Michigan's going to come out pretty strong. And I think Rutgers is going to have an epic comeback where it's going to be maybe a backdoor cover. But I just think that 20 line is, is just disrespecting Rutgers and what they've done this year. What's the first half line? First half line, let me look it up right now. I'm going to play the Jeopardy music as this goes over. <laughs> Rutgers first half line is heady advice. I'm taking Rutgers first half. Oh, uh, no, the no, end no, of no, it. no, 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 no. <laughs> it's plus 11 and a half. It's plus 11 and a half. Ooh. I'm taking the plus 20. Yeah. Again, say it every week. We're recording this on Tuesday. So we're taking the Tuesday, Tuesday lines. I wish this was 21. Hopefully it gets there at some point where I can bet it that way. But for now, I'm taking it 
plus 20, Scarlet Knights. In honor of the uh, new uh, Saint, what is it, Many Saints of Newark coming out? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's going to be sick. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait for that. It looks good. All right, who you got? All right, I am going to Soldier Field, where we got Notre Dame taking on Wisconsin. Uh I am going with the Fighting Irish as much as I despise them. I'm taking them plus six and a half. Plus six and a half. Well, guess what? I'm on the same game, but I'm going to try to one-up you on this and take them money line, baby. Going for the three instead of the one. All right. That was a last minute decision. I had plus six on. Okay. And I respect I that. Them. I'm going money on. <laughs> just to try to squeak out those points. All right. So we're both on Notre Dame over Wisconsin. Mm. Yeah, that spread's a little fishy. Wisconsin minus six, one and one against yeah. three and oh, Notre Dame. Is that just like a huge home? It's a 12 o'clock game. So it's not like a huge home. Yeah, it's a noon game. game, neutral field. Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 wait, no, it's neutral field. Yeah, what the? Yeah, soldier field. Yeah. All right, I don't like that bet. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. We were tracking it. Uh oh. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do Uh-oh. it. I'm going, I'm going Notre Dame money line. I'm not falling okay. for another Kirby and <laughs> Um, so for my last pick, and this is when you know you're down in the dumps. You got to look for these kind of out of the box picks. I'm gonna go. This just stood out to me as well as another weird spread. I'm going Western Kentucky. First Ooh. half, plus four and a half at home against Indiana. Okay. Right, Indiana minus nine. So it could get a little bit out of control, but I'm hoping that the Western Kentucky students, fans come roaring. Indiana doesn't know what hit them. Western Kentucky somehow keep it close in the first half. Hilltopper faithful, baby. <laughs> Jump and punch it. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> We need to make some noise on Saturdays, man. <laughs> oh, love that. All right, so I am going to go – I'm going to take the Northwestern Wildcats. Tough start to the year. I think they're one and two. Mm-hmm. But I got their over six and a half for the year, so I need them to turn around this week. Got a minus 15 at home against the Ohio Bobcats. That's a good pick of that minus 15. That's mm-hmm. a tough number. I know. That's well, very tough. All right. So you had – what was your uh, second one? Oh, uh, did we – I only did two. Oh, yeah. You got to go again. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're tipping ball. me yeah. like the refs. You're cheating yeah. me on a pick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so fine. down in the dumps. I need to go off my chest. Too. need to go <laughs> off my chest. All right. So you had Northwestern minus 15. Oh, I know what it was. I meant to – I'm going with the Scarlet Knights plus 20 as well in the big house. Ah, uh-huh. Okay. Many states in Newark got up on that trip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it makes sense. It's a sign. Hey, they're gonna have they're gonna have a good good season. Big upset here, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. Um, so that is it for week three of the Big Ten Betting Bonanza. I would suggest fading me. Um, not following my picks this week. <laughs> see what I do and then maybe start trailing me as I get hotter. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta build up some momentum. Yes, I do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and tuning in to Whiteout Weekly. We will be back every week with more Penn State news and information. And once again, I cannot thank you enough for spending your time with us. Luchi, signing out. See you guys.